We're ready? We're live. Hi. Hello, everyone. It's, uh, at the moment, it's just Roy. Uh, Val is uh, Val's in the class, actually, and so maybe we'll see her pop by at some point. But So she's kind of busy today. But uh, today we wanted to show you our glass-blowing furnace. So we have it kind of set up over here. You'll see Madison is going to do a demonstration for us right here at the beginning. I know it's a little loud, so hopefully you guys can still hear me okay. Um, so this is a double dragon furnace. So you'll see it has two ports or two openings in it. That's the double part of it. Um, this is made by a company in Georgia, uh, Americus, Georgia, I think they're at. It's called uh, Mobile Glass Blowing. And uh, what's real, really kind of unique about this particular uh, piece of equipment is that, so this is a furnace and the reheating chamber at the same time. In traditional glass blowing facilities, there'll be just the furnace, which is the lower half of this piece is where the molten glass is at. So inside here is a crucible that's holding about 90 pounds of molten glass. And then the reheating chamber is the tarp, top part of the unit. So you can see that where the flame is kind of coming out the door, uh, that's the reheating chamber. So uh, again, what's unique about our setup is that there are two. Uh, everything's kind of built into one unit. Typically, the furnace and the reheating chamber would be two separate pieces of equipment. Uh, so this is sort of nice because it keeps a smaller profile. Um, we don't have to have as much room. You'll see it's on wheels, so we can... Um, uh, so we can move it if we have to move it somewhere, which we talk about all the time. So one of the things I can start talking about what Madison is doing is, so she's gathering glass at the moment, so she needs to go into where the molten glass is at. You can see it has a nice kind of uh, glow to it. Uh, we have to heat the pipes up beforehand, so that's one of the things that we were doing. Uh, the pipe has to be warm so the glass will stick to it. So that Madison went in and got a gather, it's called. So she uh, grabbed some of the molten glass. And then she was doing marvering, which was rolling it on the uh, table. So now she's going to come over and pick up some color. So I, I think Madison's going to make a jellyfish for us today. And I can tell you that in the jellyfish, there's there's actually no blowing uh, at all. So, there, so Madison's not going to do any actual blowing, but she's going to be manipulating the glass. Uh, doing more of a sculpture. This will end up looking more like a paperweight kind of a thing. I think maybe Kaylee sent some pictures yesterday of what uh, what Madison's going to make. We did. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see what Madison makes until tomorrow because we have to let the glass cool down slowly. So the, the furnace, in case you're wondering, is about 2100 degrees. And um, so uh, the blowpipe that... Um, <laughs> Madison is working on is um, stainless steel and we work with stainless steel because it's not a great conductor of heat so now you can see Madison is going back to the bench and here she's going to manipulate the tendril part of the jellyfish and so here the glass is probably I don't know 1400 degrees or so and she's poking it. Uh, you'll see that we're wearing long sleeves today, and then Madison's wearing something on her hand that just help protect from the heat a little bit. But typically, we don't wear any gloves. If you guys have questions about what's going on, feel free to, to message us below. Or later on, if you have questions, you know you can always reach us on email, Facebook at DelphiGlass.com, or Instagram. You can message us at Instagram. So now we have to, so what happens is when we're out of the furnace or out of the reheating chamber part of the furnace, the glass cools down. So uh, you'll see Madison going back periodically to heat the glass back up to get it molten enough for us to do something with it. And again, here she's doing what's called marvering. So she's shaping the glass mainly here. Uh, what we're trying to do is get the little, again, the little tendril part of the um, jellyfish. So I know it's probably a little challenge to see, but you can see maybe the, oh yeah, from uh, in the middle, I can see the glowing orange from the glass and you can see the little tendrils kind of forming. Um, if you come around here, Kaylee, maybe when you, when you see it in the light, sometimes you can see the color. Oh gosh, it's all just lit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's pretty hot, you can imagine. So often not a bad thing to do in Michigan when it's cold out. 
course, today it's only 40 degrees, so it's... I know. Too nice for February, that's for sure. So, oh, sorry. So one of the... Uh, say what? Yeah, yeah. So one of the simple rules... One of the simple rules in glass blowing is the person with a glass with a blowpipe has a right of way. So it's Kaylee in my job to get out of her way when she's working. So here you can see her stretching, uh, creating now putting a little twist in it to create the little uh, tendrils. And then we're going to cut off that little bit of extra color at the top, which we don't need. So now she's going to go uh, get uh, warm this up. And I think I'm going to help her. I think if I'm not mistaken, she asked me to grab some glass for her at some point. Sweet. So, yep. So now what's going to happen is uh, Madison needs to gather some more glass to use as the cap or the top of the jellyfish. And so she's going to grab a little more clear. I'm just going to keep this kind of moving for us. So one of the things we have to always do with a blowpipe in your hand is always continually rotate it because we have to keep the glass moving. Otherwise, gravity will cause it to start to bend. But you can see Madison's grabbing some more color. And this is going to be the top part of the jellyfish. So that she's going to stick to this somehow. <laughs> yeah, you can start to see some of the swirls or some of the color as the glass cools down. So we don't want to let this get too cool um, or else the glass will thermal shock. So I think. I think I'm going to flash it real quick. So I'm just going to just reintroduce it back into the, uh, the reheat chamber just so it doesn't cool off too much. I don't want it super hot. Uh, I don't want it dripping off, but I don't want it so cold that it cracks. And again, if you, I apologize if you can't hear me too well. I'm you know next to the furnace, which has a blower on it. So it's blowing air in, right? So uh, if you're curious, this is just running off of uh, natural gas and air. So it's pulling oxygen from the air. You ready? So I'm going to go, I'm going to head back to the table. I don't need to sit down for this. Oh no. Yeah, 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 yeah. So often things don't always go as planned in the world of glass blowing. So we kind of uh, compromise and we make things work. So, so you see, mass has got not as clean as maybe we might have liked, but um, yeah, once you can heat that and melt that down. Carol says your audio is just fine. Thank you, Carol. Oh, thanks, Carol. We Thanks were for hoping our mics would pick it up. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining us today, too, people. We appreciate it. So now we just need to reheat it, right? So um, Madison's just getting that, that new glass she put on there. It got a little misshapen, so we're just going to heat that up so she can shape it a little bit better, right? So by um, getting it warm, we can kind of bend it around. Did you lose it? So the tricky part is always getting the glass at the right temperature to do what you want to do. So one of the things that uh, Madison is doing is these are called optic molds. So it's a aluminum mold and she's just putting it in there uh, to shape the end a little bit. It's kind of subtle. It's hard to see. But uh, when we finish, it often creates a, a nice, interesting pattern to the to the top part of the jellyfish, which I don't know what that's called. Is that what's the, the head of the jellyfish, right? I, sounds right. I like it. it. Sounds good, right? We'll Just, go with that. Right? Yeah, if anybody knows, they want to offer up a... <laughs> and I say tentacles. I don't think that's what those are either, but, but you get the idea. So, yeah, look at that. Isn't that fun? So the glass is really molten today, right? So, you know, it's uh, some days we have a, a different feel for the how the glass is. So what Madison's doing here is so she's using a wooden block. So we just simply refer to it as a block. 
um, and that is helping to shape the glass. So she's dipping in this bucket of water behind her, and we keep the wooden blocks soaking in water all the time. So what's really shaping the glass is the steam coming off, uh, not necessarily the wooden block. So if we do this right, the blocks should last a long time, and they don't just burn up. Um, so it's an, uh, like I said, it's a great way of kind of shaping them. Uh, the other thing that we're uh, Madison has to do is what's called a jack line. So the tools she's using are called jacks, and so what she's doing is slightly pinching. You can see her kind of um, reducing the diameter of the glass because we will need to get the glass off the blowpipe at some point. And so you can see she's doing a great job working it off the off the blowpipe. And if it's a little narrower, it just makes it easier to break off. So that's one of the things that we're doing. We're also trying to make sure we get the glass at the right temperature. Um, I'd give it another minute. I mean, it's so molten that you'll stick to the, you'll, you'll pick up a texture from everything you're doing. So, But here we're just going to let it cool just for, just for a second, right? Just to let it cool down. Yeah, if you can see inside there, maybe, yeah, I think it shows up pretty decently, doesn't it? Uh, that's a crazy jellyfish inside there. Very watery in there. Yeah, it's, yeah, it looked like it was super molten. The glass is pretty good. That's probably good. So next to, um, right here to the left of us in front of Kaylee is a kiln. So this is a, a what's called a front-loading kiln because we can just open up the, the lid like this. And so we have to control how the glass cools down. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, when it's here, it, at this temperature here, it's probably about... 1100 degrees so we need to let the glass kind of cool down on its own if it cools off too quickly it'll thermal shock so um, Madison just knocked it off and then so the edge tends to be a little sharp so she's just going to hit it with a, a torch just to smooth the glass out so it's not so sharp uh, more than likely we'll probably grind it you know the next day we'll if it's too much of a, a point on there we'll try to um, maybe grind that down uh, she's going to pick it up with a tools that have that Kevlar coating on them. Uh, open the lid, it goes in the kiln, and that's that was it. Nice job, Madison. That was great. Nice one. So there's, yeah, that was it. That's jellyfish. So again, it has to stay in the kiln. Now, it'll stay in the kiln probably for about nine or ten hours. And then for it to cool all the way down closer to room temperature, that's probably going to be uh, uh, 12 hours or so. So we always just say overnight. So um, in the morning, we will come in and we'll take it out and maybe, um, well, maybe not tomorrow, at least a couple days, we'll get Kaylee, we'll get it to Kaylee so she gets a picture so you guys can see what it, that looks see like. the finished result. Yeah, yeah. So then I'm going to actually make an ornament, so, um, so which actually involves blowing, so we thought that might be interesting to see, uh, a little bit of blowing. So. Madison is Mike and... Yeah, I'm going to pass my mic to Mads and she's going to take I'm going to put on some safety glasses. I don't know if you notice that Madison is wearing safety glasses. So we do wear safety glasses when we're working around the, the furnace for a couple of reasons. One is probably the obvious one. is just so in case anything flies towards our eyes, we have some kind of protection. But the second one, which I think is probably the more important one, um, is that we're wearing glasses that are tinted that will um, filter out all the ultraviolet and infrared rays, right? Because you can see all that orange glow coming from the furnace. And so along with that, is you know some wavelengths that are not so great for your eyes over time right so we're just trying to you know protect our eyes um, so i have those on i'm gonna have to heat up a pipe so give me a second uh, now the furnace is kind of loud so i couldn't exactly hear everything that roy was saying while i was working so i might end up repeating a couple of things but that's all right he likes to do some of that anyway <laughs> but so yeah um, you can probably tell I'm quite red in the face and sweaty I hope that gives you an idea of just how hot it really is to work next to this thing uh, you kind of might have noticed that I was trying to stand back a little bit while I was working on it you know going in getting more glass kind of got to stand pretty close but you know when you're just heated up you can kind of stand a little bit further back but yeah. you might have also noticed you sanitize the pipe a little bit. We just use like 80% alcohol water to kind of clean them off between users. And yeah, we're just preheating the pipe now. Um, if it's too cool when we try to go in and gather glass, the glass doesn't want to stick to it too well. So we just got to preheat it a little bit. That way the hot glass has something hot to stick on to. That's another benefit of the stainless steel. Not only the way that it conducts heat, but it also picks up the glass pretty well. Uh, 
while that's preheating, let's show some of your other little yeah. jellyfish we've got going on over here. Yeah, we've got all kinds of different jellyfish, different colors, different combinations. <laughs> They've been busy out here with the, with the furnace. Yes. Yeah, anytime I'm not busy doing something else, I'm over here seeing what I can make. So lots of flowers, lots of hearts, lots of jellyfish, a few different Christmas ornaments. We got some pumpkins. Yeah, we're just trying to learn as much as we can every day. So <laughs> now Roy's ready for his first gather here. When you're doing a Christmas ornament, you kind of got to do two separate gathers of glass. That way, you just have enough to blow it out without making it too thin or too small. So he's got his first gather. Just gonna marble it on the table. The table helps us shape it as well as cools the glass down a little bit so it's a bit more of a workable temperature. You notice he's got some glass hanging off the end of it. I don't know how well you could see it on camera there, but he's got kind of a meatball shaped piece of glass that's hanging off the end of the pipe. And that's where he's gonna start blowing the bubble into. So he's got a bubble there. You're good right there, Roy. <laughs> that's a good sized bubble. Yeah. So we try to keep the glass around 2,000 degrees, um, but we adjust the settings on our furnace every day, so that way we can kind of turn it down at night. Uh, makes us feel a little bit safer. Uh, but the disadvantage of that is that it's hard to tell the temperature every day. We've got to come in and turn it up, and sometimes we've got it too cold, sometimes we've got it too hot, but today I think it's a pretty molten, good hot temperature for us. Now you can see he's kind of just rounding out the tip of it a little bit. Yes. <laughs> see his air bubble in there? Mm-hmm. So I'm just for that. Yeah. Yeah, if he was to try to gather more glass on it while it was all hot and sticky, uh, it's kind of like why we have to heat the pipe up. You know, if it's hot, then the glass has something to stick to. Uh, so for the glass, we want it to be nice and cool. That way our bubble doesn't get crushed or fall off or anything like that. <laughs> Roy's adding some more green here. It's going to make us a nice green ornament. <laughs> and now this color that we're using is actually uh, just crushed up glass. We call it frit. So all of our glass is 96 here for glass blowing. So there's all 96 glass crushed up. And that's how we add our color into it. Now we've got a second gather. Just going to put the color on top of that. And you can see the glass is really, really hot and soft. That helps him pick it up easier. If the glass cools too quickly, then the frit doesn't want to stick on too well. <laughs> there you go. Yep, so now he's marbling again, which again, cools it and shapes it at the same time. You can see that... You can see that the frit is very sharp and jagged, but as he kind of heats it up, it'll melt out and round down and kind of soften into the rest of the glass in there. So you can see he's kind of slowly going into the reheat chamber there. There's a couple of reasons for that. One of them is uh, just that it heats up gradually. It's not just a uh, you know, molten blob on there that wants to fall off, but it's also nice because since our reheat chamber and our furnace are combined into one, uh, we don't want to drop any of that frit into the clear glass in there. So the slower you go in, it kind of gives it a chance to slowly melt into it. And you'll notice that he's constantly rotating it. That also has to do with the heat and gravity. So when the glass gets soft, it's going to want to just fall off the end of the pipe, but if we keep it rotated, then that triple force will help it want to stay on the pipe a little bit better. Now he's taking it over to the bench. So he's going to use the blocks like I did to shape it. We're actually using cherry wood. Uh, glass blowing always uses some kind of fruit wood when we're glass blowing. Fruit wood tends to be a bit denser, so helps it not just combust into flames <laughs> as soon as it touches the hot glass. It also smells really nice. I know you can't tell that on camera, but <laughs> just take my word for it. <laughs> I was just going to try to blow it out a little bit more now that he's got that nice round shape in there. Uh, I don't know how well you can tell on camera, but it's filling up with air pretty good. Yeah, 
So as he puts that air in, it kind of forces all the glass that was at the end of the pipe to kind of expand outwards. And that gives us the walls of the ornament there. So it's got a pretty nice round shape to it now. Oh. Now this tool he's got in his hand, these are called jacks. He's going to use these to start establishing a jack line here. That way it just kind of has somewhere to break off and just kind of narrow the neck a little bit while doing that. Well, there's a common problem in glass blowing, which is that a lot of us amateurs like myself, we like to try to put that jack line in kind of far up the pipe, but that always makes it difficult to break off. He doesn't want to break if the jack line is kind of high up the pipe. But he put it right at the end of the pipe, so it should break off pretty nicely for him. <laughs> Fingers crossed. You know, one of the fun things about glass blowing is even if you're doing everything right, the glass has, its, has a mind of its own. So you kind of just got to hope and practice. <laughs> a lot of hoping and practicing in glass blowing. Which, if anyone watching is a fuser, you might know what that's like, putting things in the kiln and just kind of hoping that everything's programmed right and that you know what you're doing enough for it to go well in there. Even cutting the, any glass. Yes. <laughs> Even just cutting glasses like that. So yep, he kind of has a little bit of a neckline established. Now he's just going to try to narrow it down a little bit more. You can see whether we're working it, whether we're heating it, or whether we're walking around with it, it's always turning. That pipe is always spinning. <laughs> now, I'm just going to blow it back out a little bit more. Sometimes when we use the jacks, it can kind of collapse the bubble and mess up the shape a little bit, but we can just blow it back out a bit to uh, fix that. Now it's all nice and round again. Oh, that looks good. Uh, so you can see he's still spinning it, and I don't know uh, how obvious it is on camera yet again, <laughs> um, but he kind of has the pipe rested on this little metal plate there. It's actually two round uh, ball bearing type of things, and we call those a uh, yoke. That just makes it a little bit easier to hold it in the heat. Uh, so that way it helps it spin and rotate in there, and you're not carrying this heavy pipe with heavy glass the whole time. And you can see he's rotating it, always rotating. He's standing a little bit back from the furnace, so he's not right up in the heat. Yep, so we're still just kind of creating that neck a bit. You might have noticed that glass blowing is kind of just a lot of heating it, working it, heating it, working it, back and forth like that a lot. So he's kind of slowly taking his time, narrowing it a little bit, blowing it out a little bit, back and forth like that. But ideally we want that neck there to be about finger size in diameter. So looks like he's getting pretty close. We saw that flame shoot out of there. That's pretty normal because <laughs> we're working with a lot of hot instruments and the jacks we actually put beeswax on kind of helps them to just not get stuck to the glass at all so you can see he's rubbing in the beeswax there however the heat and the beeswax together can sometimes cause a little bit of a flame like that as you can see yeah so while he's blowing that out and shaping it a bit more um, I just went ahead and grabbed another pipe just to preheat it for him because once he's done with this step here, he's going to have to put the uh, loop on so he can actually hang it from a tree. So you can see he's getting pretty close to done with it, pretty nice and round. And that neck is pretty small. So sometimes that happens, just it collapses a little bit and then the glass stiffens up while we're working it and that can make it a little bit trickier to shape it, but still overall a pretty good shape you got going. If you couldn't hear Roy, what he was looking at was he's got a little flat spot, he's not sure how we got Can't quite get that worked out. Off 
we're going to try to round off that bottom. Yeah. So, yep, he's just going to round off that bottom. Uh, he's happy with how thick the neck part is. He's just going to try to get the shape a little bit more perfectly round. And then he's going to break it off and put the loop on the top. So you can kind of see as he pushes the air in it, it kind of forces the glass to expand and round out a little bit more. Glass, when it's hot, it always wants to be nice and round, so that's kind of why he had to heat it up first. It also gets really stiff the longer it's out here in the room temperature air, so the more we heat it up, the rounder it'll be. I think I'm going to take it over. Yeah. Well, I don't know. i got a wrinkle there. <laughs> Just saying he's got a wrinkle in it, but... Flash yep, so what he's going to do now is called a flash. That's where we put it in the reheat chamber for just a few seconds at a time. That way it heats up and it doesn't get too hot or anything. Just enough for us to be able to break it off nicely. You can see him taking it over to the table. He's going to use the diamond shears to just kind of pinch that down. And then it also cools it at the same time. So it gives a little bit of a thermal shock. Helps the glass know where to break at. And there you go. It just pops off like that. He's going to do the same thing I did, where he's just going to use the torch to kind of soften it down. Yeah. Yeah. So while he's getting our loop ready, I'm going to help him try to soften this down and have it sit upright for him. So the next step should be nice and easy. Hope this torch isn't too loud. <laughs> Roy's saying the pipe is a little too hot right now. This glass is more molten than we're usually used to working with. So we kind of had a little bit droop off there at first, but it's got it on there now. We kind of just put a little dollop of clear on, and it kind of just folded over on itself. We're just going to adjust a little bit, make that loop a little bit more solid on there. That's good, I got And now he's putting it in the annealer. And it is all set. And that's how you make a glass blowing ornament. <laughs> Alright you guys, thanks so much for joining yeah, Roy and Madison yeah, today. Thank you. Us today. Hope you had a little bit of fun. Yeah. Again, if you have questions afterwards, just feel free to reach out to us and we'll, we'll answer them eventually. So I think we're going to come back in a couple weeks and I think we'll have something else that's pretty interesting to show you. So Flame working. Feed basics. I think we're just, we've had to <laughs> alter our have schedule we? already. So okay. I think we're going to show the Wazer. Oh, that is super exciting, you yeah, guys. So I think you've seen a bit, a little preview of that. It is our new laser jet cutter. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, our water jet cutting cool. machine. So, but thanks for joining us today, <laughs> and we'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Yeah. Bye, guys.